Well, everybody, I am back, and you better get your pen or your pad out. So I'm going to be talking about uh, how to position yourself. Next week, I'm going to be giving you the specifics of all the things that you can do from my book. And we're talking about how you can vibrate and attract love, whether you're married, attract more love if you're married, uh, and how you can vibrate and attract love in your life. And I hope you understand vibrate the law of vibration and the reason why I went into depth in that area is because a lot of people don't really know that you're always creating you're creating with your mood you're creating with your attitude uh you can create by thought alone so it's really important that you understand the fixed laws that are in the universe because I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, the devil, no, it ain't that. It's your own thinking and believing and the fact that you may be unaware. So I'm going to be talking, y'all, and I'm going to be talking fast. So how can you position yourself for love? First thing you got to know is God is love and he desired for you to have love. You were created for love. You ever had a little been around a little baby, what's the first thing they going to do? Run to you and jump up in your lap, lap and snuggle up next to you. Uh, you know, Angel, as soon as somebody comes in the house, what does she want to do? Uh, we had a birthday party this morning here, and she ran up to them and was wanting them to rub on her. And so you, you're created for love. I love what Neville God has said. He said, "Get God is on your side. Get on your own side. All right, so get on your own side that love is available to me. So th these are some questions that I want you to answer between now and next week. You got to know God is a great matchmaker. Maker. God can move uh, if you're in Atlanta and 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 you and you uh are are in the right vibration. You know, God can move somebody from Timbuktu, I used to wonder if Timbuktu was a place, but it is, from Africa to here, and you accidentally are connected by the Spirit. So know that God is a great matchmaker. But these are some questions that you need to ask yourself in order to really get ready for love. And and why are we doing this? Because we want to bring our best self. We know that we cannot look outside to any individual to, to for them to make us happy, make us complete. What was that music, uh, that that a movie that said you complete me? And I get where they're coming from, but but you want to go as complete as you can into the relationship. I knew of a marriage, and this man he gave his wife everything. I mean, they lived in a fabulous home, beautiful pool, million dollar home. Not that things are everything to, to uh, in marriage. I mean, he tried. He was a sweet guy. I mean, he, he, he bent over backwards. He gave her everything, but there was nothing that he could do because she had so much unresolved stuff on the inside that the outside stuff that didn't matter. So you guys, these are some questions that you need to answer in order to position yourself for love. It's kind of like you wouldn't give your younger child keys to your new Mercedes. So the first question is, how did your past relationships end? And is there a pattern in your life? You know, are you always choosing the bad boys or, or are you always need men? Are you always needing someone to be rescued? Uh, uh, I knew of a guy, every girl that he met, he she was in trouble. She was about to lose her house. She uh, was about to lose her job. It was always something where he could rescue and fix and all of that came from his childhood. So what are your patterns? Are you, do you leave men before they leave you? 
are you uh, emotionally unavailable? I'm not going to go into that, but that is majorly important. Next, what are your core beliefs about love? What do you really believe? Do you feel worthy? This is a major question. Do you feel that you are worthy, lovable, and deserving of love just like you are? I don't care if you out of shape. I don't care how old you are. Vibration doesn't know an age. Vibration and attraction doesn't know the difference between 1,000 and 100 million. It's your own thinking. So, so answer that. Do you feel worthy? Do you feel uh, deserving? Do you feel lovable? Are you ready to be adored? And my question is, do you love and adore and value your own self? Next, what are your core beliefs about love? Um, oh, I just asked that question. And, and, you know, and do you feel like, I remember one lady said, you know, you can't trust me. I'm like, who told you that? She said, well, that's what my mom always said. And, you know, that became her core belief. And she was 50 something years old. That takes me to my next question. Do you have, and I know 99.999% of you do, have an unhealed soul or childhood stuff that needs to be healed because it is directing your behavior? I always say if you don't get the healing you need in relationships, you will become like one parent and choose the other. I became like my mom earlier in my life, very docile, needed to be rescued, Cinderella, Cinderella complex. I always attracted men like my father, strong, uh, could handle business because I didn't think who, who I was was enough. I needed somebody outside of me to validate me to tell me how pretty I was, how great I was. And boy, there's nothing wrong with that. But nobody on earth can do that for you but you. Childhood issues is the number one reason that you choose relationship. You know, and we're not here to blame anybody, but I mean, were both of your per parents there for you? Just had somebody just realized that they were left alone all of their life because both parents were working and this young lady had to fend for herself. So what she learned early was you can't depend on people. You can't trust people. Uh, I mean, she didn't know she was learning this. I got to take care of myself. I can't get let, let people get too close to me. Uh, I had another person who lived in a military family. They would move every four years. He didn't know this, but he said, well, you know, I never got close to people because I didn't want to deal with the rejection. So when he became adult, after he dated a woman for a while, he would leave because he didn't want to be rejected. Those are the kinds of things that you need to take a look at. Some people call it shadow work, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's really where you are taking a look at, you know, what are those dark things that need to be healed? It doesn't have to take long. Uh, next, I talked about what are some common patterns in your relationship. Do you always choose married folk? And you know why you do that? Because if when you do, you don't have to commit. Uh you remember you attract who you are. Are you choosing emotionally uh, 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 unavailable people? Sometimes I've heard that a man would chase a woman and then when he gets her, the chase is over and he pulls back because he really doesn't know how to be committed or even connected. It's a big difference between sex and connection. I'm moving fast, everybody. Remember, you are attracting through who you are. You don't attract what you want. I want love, Constance. We ain't begging for love. 
We're not praying for love. We are being love because we attract. I talked about vibration in part one. We attract who we are. We attract through our I amness. You know, life is happening through, as, and for you. So if the same same things keep happening, take a look at it. Uh, I talked about doing your shadow work, your transformational work. Uh, one thing that I had to deal with was, girlfriend, you're not Cinderella trying to be rescued. And men were so shocked because I was appeared to be so independent, but I was so needy and clingy once I got in the relationship. Uh, what else do I want to ask you? Oh, I want to emphasize, you want to bring your best self into the relationship with another person because what you are doing, you are merging two personalities. You are merging two families, two belief systems. And so if you bring a lot of stuff, a lot of unresolved stuff, I don't trust uh, that you don't talk about your feelings, that you don't communicate, that you got a lot of secrets, that one person has a, 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 a checking account and the other person doesn't know about it because her mama said, you got to always keep some side money for yourself because you don't ever know what these men are going to do. Y'all. So you don't know that you are feeling and are believing that, but in your subconscious is so embedded, you're taking actions from that. So, so you want to bring your best self. Do you have remnants of past relationships? So what do I mean by that? Are you still resentful? Uh, it's it's kind of like a little residue. Have you ever maybe spilled some water and you thought that you wiped it up and and then you maybe a couple of days you said, oh, it's still wet over there. Why is that? Because that residue of water was not completely uh, cleaned up. So so are you mad at anybody? How are you going to take that into another relationship? So many people are on dating apps looking outside of themselves for somebody to give to them what they are not even giving to themselves, which is love, acceptance, which is grace, which is forgiveness, which is understanding and acceptance. And that's why so many people are putting up pictures from, let's just say, five years ago, because right now they just don't accept and love their bodies where they are. And so if you are still mad at your ex who moved on and married somebody else, who betrayed you, who hurt you, you want to deal with that and not carry it into another relationship. If you are currently married and your partner cheated on you and every day you are so mad and angry and resentful, uh, you need to walk through that. You need to get help for that because you do not want to live your life mad, upset, angry, uh, just fussing every day. You want to live your best life ever. All right. And, and some questions you need to ask yourself. These are some profound questions. I, I think I heard somebody say who I interviewed said the questions that you ask yourself can really bring to you your best life. The questions that you ask and answer. Maybe you mad because the man is not paying child support. Now, I probably would be mad too, but how much of that anger and resentment and madness and upset, and I could use some more words, uh, are you going to allow to rule your life? Because when you are angry and you carry that around a portion 
uh, uh, of your uh, inside that you could be using to create your life is being occupied by that. I talked about forgiveness. Have you forgiven yourself? You did the best you could with the knowledge that you had. Maybe you stayed in a relationship too long. Maybe you maybe you saw the red flags, but you you did not you ignored them because you thought, well, you know, your love can change him. Your love is not enough to change that man or that woman unless they are ready for change. I heard Steve Harvey say, whether you like him or not, he said, a man would change for the right woman. And so you could do everything right. I I, I knew of a couple, I mean, this woman was like perfect. But because the man was upset with himself, I mean, I mean, if the potatoes had a little lump in it, he would just kind of go off and all of that. And so just the prayer of forgiveness, forgiveness for staying in relationships too long. One of the signs of codependency is that you stay in relationships even when loyalty is undeserved. I know a lady, I'm not judging nobody, she'd been engaged for 12 years and I said to her, when is he going to marry you? Why would you be engaged for 12 years? What is it in you that would settle for that? Because you never choose any higher than how you view yourself. And we come to find out she didn't really care and love for herself deeply. I'm talking fast. So these are all questions, everybody, you're going to answer. I want you to share this, this show with somebody or some of your other friends. Do you believe that you can still attract and add more love into your life? Do you or do you believe it's too late for our marriage? It's never too late. Uh, do you believe I'm too old? I'm I'm too overweight. I'm too set in my ways. I told a man, if you set in your ways, how is God gonna really uh, uh, mold and shape and reshape you? for the love of your life that you desire. All right. For my married folk, uh, and boy, I've been married, and boy, I tell people, when you get married, who the person is is amplified and gets bigger. What do I mean by that? If he snores, maybe while y'all was dating, that wasn't that big. But boy, when you get married, (laughs) that's pretty big. And so can you begin to focus in on the good in that person? Where is your focus every day? Is it on what he or she is not doing? Uh, uh, or do you do you compliment them? Do you remember why you did marry them? What are you looking at? Because what you focus on gets bigger. Sometimes when you begin to focus in on all the good, I had a married couple many years ago. I told her, just begin to compliment him for the good. So every day she would write down just three things that she had forgotten about because she was so focused in on the negative stuff. Well, thank you for uh, filling up my car with gas. I appreciate that. Thank you for always manicuring the yard. And do you know that within 30 days, They were just so in love because what you focus on gets bigger. Now, that doesn't mean that the other stuff did not uh, vanish and wasn't there. But that's just one thing that you can do. Are you showing yourself the same love right now that you want to be shown by a partner? OMG, that is so big. So. What attitudes do you need to adjust in your own doggone self and change? Are you self-centered? Do you like to have your own way? Uh, Where are you willing to shift and change? Are you critical of yourself and others? I always say a person who who is critical has been criticized. Are you, are you looking for perfection, a sugar daddy, or a sugar mama? I mean, you got to get real about all of this. Are you grateful and happy for, for what you do have and who you are? And I'm going to reiterate this because, y'all, my time is up. 
Do you love, validate, and appreciate your own self? Those are some questions. Those are some powerful questions. If you ask yourself those questions and ask the Holy Spirit to really help you to identify and shift and change, I tell you what the miraculous uh, could happen in your life. And and yes, uh, all of these questions will help to position you for love. I'm a living witness. I know what I'm talking about. You know, I've helped so many. I'm living that life and I've helped so many women and so many men to really get in the vibration. We're not really trying to get love. We're really just aligning. Like Neville God, Goddard said, get on your own side. God is on your side. God is the great matchmaker. Get on your own side with your thinking. Get on your own side by really answering these questions. If you're serious, it don't take God long. Not that God is holding anything back, but you will be so aligned. It will happen so quickly because really in the universal laws, there is no time. God is outside of time. Time is an illusion and, and, and there's only now. So next week, I'm going to be talking to you about how to know that you've already received love, how to use your imagination, how to use your words. I'm so excited. So as I said, share this with uh, five of your friends. If you're looking for a great love, law of attraction coach, I'm your girl. I'm certified but I'm living the life. So email me for a discovery call, constant at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Let's make it happen. You deserve love.